What exciting thing is Paul going to tell the people in the Hebrew language? That's what we're going to find out today in Acts 22. Well, the people who put in the chapter marks left us with a cliffhanger. How exciting is that? Well, Paul is now addressing people in the Hebrew language, and he tells them the whole story. I was born in Tarsus. I was educated at the feet of Gamaliel, who was a very well-known rabbi. And strict in the words of God, I learned it all. I persecuted the way all the time. Death, binding prisoners, bringing them back. I did all these things. So he tells them the whole story about his trip to Damascus and what happened to him and how Jesus asked him, why are you persecuting me? He's persecuting his people. And Jesus says, you are persecuting me. When he saw this light, he didn't understand. He didn't know what he should do. He tells the whole story. And I'm going to go ahead and recount it again. And, and how he then got sent to the Gentiles far away. And so it said right up to that point, they were listening to him, and then they started yelling, raising their voices that, you know, get rid of this person from earth. He shouldn't be allowed to live. And they were shouting and throwing and flinging, it says, their cloaks and dust in the air. So he tried, you know, and I think he tried to give them this message, and they just weren't even going to listen anymore because he was confessing these things that he did to Stephen to the other apostles, and how it was wrong. And that now he had to be sent away, sent to the Gentiles, because no one was going to accept this message. The tribune brought him back in and suggesting, you know, say, oh, well, we have to examine him by flogging, which means we're going to interrogate him with beatings. And that's not great. But then they wanted to know, why are they all yelling at you? Why are they all so angry with you? And so they stretched him out for the, and these would, chances are, be um, whips with barbs on them. So it's not just whipping, it is much worse. And Paul said to the centurion, can you just flog a man who was a Roman citizen and not condemned or, you know, not brought to a tribunal or a court case? And the centurion heard that, it said, and said, what are we to do? This guy's a Roman citizen. We can't just do these things. And so the tribune came back and says, are you a Roman citizen? And Paul said, yeah, I am. The tribune didn't understand it. I bought the citizenship that he had with a large sum of money. And Paul's like, nope, I was this way from birth. And so then they all had to leave because they couldn't whip him, punish him, unless he was given a fair trial as a Roman citizen. And they realized, just like the people before, that they had made a mistake. They bound a man without this court case. So then the next day, they wanted to know, why are the Jews so mad at you? They unbound him. They commanded the chief priests and the councils to meet, and they brought Paul down, and it says, set him before them. I, we want to hear what is going on here. Why are you all so angry? I think Paul wanted to stay in Jerusalem. I know how to talk to them. I know them. I was one of them. Jesus was like, nope, you're going to go far away from the city and talk to the Gentiles. And we've seen this in other people and other preachers, too. I could talk to them. They'll get it from me. All I have to do is say these words and they will get it. I know how to talk to these people. And when that doesn't happen and it doesn't go as well as you thought it was going to go, it's sad. It's disappointing. Some people in history have been angry and said the wrong words after this because they thought, oh, I, I know the magic words to say, you know, and then it doesn't work that way. But you have to realize that when people are dead set against you, it's not your words. You know, you think you're maybe even a word artist. And I know how to speak to people and I know how to say things to people, but faith and people against faith, it's not going to be like that. So we'll find out next time what happens with this conversation. What I'm going to meditate on is that fact that you think that you might know the right things to say. You might prepare a speech. You might come up with the exact most elegant words. Maybe you write a book. Maybe you do a podcast and you think you know the right things to say, and then it just doesn't work like that. You have to realize that the Holy Spirit will help you say the right things, and maybe you're planting seeds. I did a podcast about a book that says sometimes you just want to put a pebble in people's shoes so it agitates them and makes them think about something every time they walk around. We have to understand that when people fight back and yell back, 
or get this violent about things. It's protecting something in themselves, too. They don't want to hear this because they don't want to believe. I knew there was places in my own life where I didn't want to disappoint my grandmother or I didn't want to. I I remember even literally thinking of that. Like, I think that I wanted to be a Christian, but not until my grandmother was no longer on this planet because I didn't want to disappoint her. We all have our reasons. They're all dumb and they're all stupid and (laughs) they're not in the plans of God. And I became a Christian before my grandmother had passed. That's not how faith works, and that's not how any of this works. And so I'm going to meditate about that. You know, even Paul thought he could say the right words. And what I'm going to pray about is that I always have that patience. I always have that courage to do the will of God and to talk to the people God has willed me to talk to, say the words of the Holy Spirit has given me, the words of God, and just understand that the reaction, it may not be what we hope. And again, Maybe we're going to put that thread in someone's head, that pebble in their shoe. We're going to make them think for a moment. So that moment when they're not so angry, they go back home and they think about what you said. Obviously, there were a lot of Jews that were followers of Jesus. Something needled at them to the point where they believed in Jesus. They suddenly saw what it was that Jesus was trying to say. And what I'm going to tell others is the fact that the gospel makes people mad. And there's a lot of people out there on the internet that will say, when you say something about God, they're not mad at you. They're mad at Jesus. They're taking their anger out at Jesus against you. And that you don't take it personally and you keep teaching that proper message that you should be strong. But again, people are not going to necessarily take that message well. Everyone, thanks so much. I appreciate you listening to the podcast. Please subscribe and tell a friend. Maybe other people would love to go through the Bible slowly, piece by piece, and figure out what exactly is being said. Hey, I never even heard of that Sons of Sceva thing before. That was pretty incredible, right? So going through the Bible in small steps, I hope it's useful to you, and maybe someone else would find it useful as well. Thanks so much for listening. Thanks.